So yeah, thanks for uh, for joining our lab share here today. We have uh, Russ Lombard from Canna Redux, and uh, we have uh, Mike Maybach, our CEO from Lab Society. Uh, my name is Jared Steers. I'm a sales rep here at Lab Society. Um, so we just wanted to go over um, some basics of the short path, some of the stuff that Russ is running, and and kind of give you guys a better idea of uh, what all it takes to uh, operate a short path distillation system. Um, so yeah, so Russ, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, appreciate you hopping on. Hey, uh, Russ Lombard. Uh, my company is Canna Redux Inc. Uh, and uh, we're based actually in Denver, uh, just uh, just down the road from home. But uh, the uh, you know we got into this uh, in kind of early 2019, late 18, with the passage of the Farm Bill, um, and uh, our concentration is on minor cannabinoids. Originally, it was on THC-free distillate. Uh, and uh, just making the, the cleanest, you know, purest product that we can and uh, supplying other retail brands. Uh, we do have a retail brand, Fortunate Company, that we supply as well. But the uh, uh, basically just being a wholesaler of all the minor cannabinoids that people want to play with and uh, create products uh, for to, you know, get it out into consumers' hands. That's awesome, Russ. That's really cool, man. Hey, you guys have a pretty extensive lab back there. I guess... Uh, you guys have definitely been picking up some new gear. You want to show us around a little? Yeah, I'm uh, happy to. I'll show you. We've got a few different items here. Uh, primarily, our main cleanup of everything that we make is these three 20-liter Lab Society short path units. You know, they basically run almost 24-7. Well, gosh, we do all sorts of stuff in all of these. It really depends on what you know, SOP we're operating under for the day and what products we're making and what, who orders what. We also have switched most of our pumps over to your guys' uh, vacuum pumps. And awesome. uh, I gotta tell you, they, uh, they're they the ones that we don't have any trouble with. I, I love hearing that, man. Have you, um, has, I'm, Jared, have you, I'm assuming you've gone over the, uh, the advanced exchange program with them? Uh, absolutely, so um, nice thing about uh, our, our white labeled pumps is that uh, you do have the option to um, you know upgrade um, for a lesser cost than buying a new pump, um, as well as uh, them being a local company uh, out of the springs, so the um, the service uh, the, the service for the pumps is is um, fairly rapid as well, which is a great um, a great benefit compared to some other companies. Awesome, yeah, Ross. I'm assuming you haven't had to do that yet, but when the time comes, it'll it'll definitely save you some change and make it quick for you to keep up and running. Which it seems like you guys are absolutely crushing it over there. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, we uh, we kick out. Um, well, our, our, we max out our capacity anywhere between 150 and 200 kilos of product uh, every week, and that's running these pretty regularly. Our comfort zone is really between 100, between 50 and 100 kilos. It just kind of depends on the product that we're running and how many times we have to run it through the short path to clean it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, we specialize in water clear products, so that uh, short path is the best way to get there. That's awesome, man. Really glad to hear that. It looks like you got the um, high efficiency cold trap. You've got the silvered heads. Oh, you've got a gear pump there. Uh, that's awesome, man. Very cool. How do you like the gear pump discharge? Yeah, you know, it's uh, for our final pass when we're going, we know we have water clear coming out. Um, rather than have to fiddle with rotating bolts and actually more than having to fiddle with cleaning bolts, uh, since we do dirty a lot of glassware, we, uh, we hook that up and it, it it works really well. It's more of a maintenance issue uh, that we just have to spend the time cleaning that and maintaining it, but uh, it makes, makes packaging things up and pulling samples a heck of a lot easier. Absolutely, and yeah, no, I feel you there. I wish I had a gear discharge pump on here. I mean, I'm still waiting to switch to my main body, as you can see, just collecting tails fraction, or heads fraction, rather, right now. But with this size of a system, you know, it's just, you know, to have this big of a flask, first of all, the distillate comes out so damn hot. So if I fill this thing up to try to change it while it's hot and big like this, you know, it's like, first of all, I got to wear a glove. It's, it gets really unwieldy and somewhat dangerous for operators in terms of the heat. So that's where those gear discharge pumps are just pretty awesome. I wish I had one on here right now. Yeah, you know, we actually really like, I see you got the valve on yours uh, that you guys make, and uh, we're definitely interested in adding that to the other two of our systems. The pump's nice, but it is, you know, expensive. Um, yes. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Having a system where we could isolate our receiving flask would be uh, a lot, you know, a lot nicer. Um, just a lot more convenient. Totally, man. 
I mean, I've, I, during this run, I've switched this flask uh, twice already. And honestly, I'm probably going to have to switch it again because what's happening with my pressures right now is they keep diving down, which is great, but they get so low that whatever is in here is too volatile and you'll see it bump. And as soon as that happens, all this pressure goes in here and creates my, a pressure spike. So it's uh, having the isolation valves either, either to just isolate or to swap is just, I think personally, it's, you need it. Especially on the larger runs. I mean, it's just, there's no other, you know, feasible way to do it when, you know, especially we tend to overload our 20 liters. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think most people do. Uh, and that's yeah. kind of the, uh, the idea with them. Uh, but they handle it really well. And, uh, you know, when we're in our ideal zone, you know, we're easily running a liter and a half uh, or more an hour. That's awesome. On these 20 liters. That's excellent. Very cool. Yeah, no, I think you'll like this distillation head once we get it done. Um, and it should be released within the next, hopefully within the next month and a half or so. But I mean, the nice thing is all you'll need to do is get the, the flask, obviously, with the reactor flange, the head, the insert, and then top mantle and insulator. So it's not like you have to buy a whole new system. You can pretty much retrofit. And these things are pretty much operating anywhere from, you know, four to five liters an hour output. I collected, I mean, granted it was first pass, so it's not the prettiest, but collected this five liter and this guy here in an hour and 10 minutes the other day. But yeah, man, um, very cool. So what, do, what would you say your favorite part about the uh, 20 liter system is as, as of right now? Uh, in the lab, we have the 320s. We also have a 12 liter and we also have a five liter. Uh, the five liter short path uh, hangs out uh, in my R&D room. Uh, the 12 liter is for any of the smaller runs that we have to do, and those are set up. The just the, the size as it has the you know boiling flask and the size of the unit increases. I mean the distillation head that's on this is already really you know a nice size and allows for a larger or faster flow. I'll say you know I got to tell you it's just the reliability. It's the whole system. You know we've been running this for gosh pushing two years now uh, with the different you know different mantles and, and whatnot. And, yeah, I can't think of a single problem other than the occasional blown fuse that is pretty easy to swap out um, oh, yeah. that we've had with any of the units. Well, also, it's, it's glassware, so we break a lot of glassware, but um, it's kind of to be expected when you're, you're running almost 24 hours a day. So, Jared, um, I'm assuming when Russ first came to you, uh, he was probably obviously not where he is now. Um, throughout the years, you know, especially to uh, get to all this water clear product, I'm assuming you probably led him in the direction of all the bench tops for that reason, right? Yeah, so it's it's been a, a pretty seamless process working with Russ, uh, being that he's had uh, quite a bit of knowledge before coming to us. So that's been that's been fantastic. But yeah, uh, assisting him in anything from, you know, just random questions in regards to, hey, would this setup work? Or, um, hey, do you uh, could you get me? Um, a special piece of glassware, whatever the case may be. Um, it's just, it's, he's been a great client to work for. And, you know, I'm happy to provide them any knowledge I can to him. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, he's, he's running three plus short pass, um, you know, instead of going with, you know, a larger system, which would he certainly could with his, you know, throughputs per week and kind of just is a testament to the system itself on, in the efficiencies and, um, you know, working with uh, someone who's, who's, uh, you know, knowledgeable about the system itself. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a good, good experience. Uh, I would say, hopefully it's the same for you, Russ. You, you guys are all fantastic. What I, I definitely appreciate about you, Jared, is uh, I come with, I know I come to you with random questions sometimes trying to, you know, figure out a workaround or, Hey, can we do this? And, uh, uh, you and really the whole staff at Lab Society, what I do appreciate is that, uh, if you don't know the answer, uh, you, you tell me you don't know the answer and you're like, but, but let me go ask Brian. Let me go ask Mike. Let me, you know, you, you've got a great team there. Uh, you guys all work well together. Um, and uh, it really helps somebody like me who's trying to think outside of the box and be kind of um, on the front end of an industry that uh, changes every gosh, six weeks. It feels like if not more to, you know, really help labs like mine and keep moving forward. Yeah, no, we, we, we appreciate you and, um, you know, kind of echoing off that, you know, outside of just short pass, you know, we do offer solutions from extraction all the way through analytical testing and everything in between. So, um, you know, Russ has been great to come to us um, for, for other pieces of equipment outside of distillation. Yeah, I mean, it's nice so that if, if I have a question about a piece of equipment or even equipment made by other companies, you know, I'll, I'll frequently run it by you and be, hey, what do you think of this? Uh, 
Yeah. You know, we work with a lot of companies in the industry. Um, so, you know, that's, it's, the transparency is really the key for us. And, uh, you know, especially maintaining that relationship with a customer like yourself, where, you know, like you, like you kind of had said earlier, if we don't know the answer, we'll certainly find it. Um, but we're not timid to tell you, we don't know. And I think that's, you know, sometimes a little bit lost in all industries. So I think it's, it's, it's a good focal point to have. Absolutely guys. Very, very valid stuff. Really appreciate all the kind words, Russ. I mean, seriously, like I would say my favorite part about working with my team and La at Lab Society is the fact that we all work so cohesively. Everybody's just experts in their own right. Um, you know, our sales team, Jared included, obviously, just knowledgeable, understands the actual process, have run systems. So you're not talking to people that are just, you know, you're run of the mill salespeople. You're talking to people that actually have experience and can help you. So I really appreciate you recognizing that and pointing that out. It's awesome. I was going to say, uh, yeah, Russ, do you have any um, questions about the equipment? Any things that, uh, you know, anything that you'd like to know design-wise or things coming, anything? Well, you know, I do love to always chat with you guys about what you guys are working on. Um, you know, the valves, for instance, I know Jared had mentioned you guys are making some improvements or working on some R&D with those. You know, I want to know what you guys are working on because that oftentimes dictates the direction my lab goes. You know, you guys... You have something new and fun. I love toys. <laughs> Heck yeah, man! Have you um have you had any time with Elite Lab? Uh, a little bit. Uh, the, uh, the reason we don't have it hooked up to any of the units right now is uh, obviously we're just we're pending some inspections on the lab and we're getting ready to you know make room for the inspector to come in and. Surely. Uh, so tracking wise, uh, eventually, I mean, we have everything wired to allow. Uh, elite lab at each station we just haven't set it up yet nice very cool yeah no um I, there's a lot of good updates coming for this where this menu here the um, ramping menu is going to be pretty much a full automation menu that'll be you'll actually get to visualize the steps and everything and something that i'm really excited about is you know this run i planned on doing the hot condenser mantle which is this guy here i don't know if you've run hot tech before but um, this is a great way to do it without using an oil recirculator like that one down there. And um, what's really great is you can actually use the new version of Elite Lab to set this controller, which controls the hot condenser mantle, to follow the vapor temp. So you could say, hey, I want you to follow the vapor temp at five degrees or 10 degrees less. So you don't even have to think about what temperature you're setting this thing at, it's just gonna be at the right temperature the whole time. Um, and the other th cool thing too is you can write functions. So like if this, then this. So like, you know, increase um, mantle temperature until vapor temperature rises. Once vapor temperature hits X temperature, stop increasing this. You can literally like write out your own run inside of here and then just hit play and it'll actually run the whole system. The only thing you have to do obviously is, you know, switch in flasks and the, the same go around. <laughs> Make it rotate bulbs for me and then I'll be, uh, I'll be thrilled. <laughs> Yep. No, yeah. Unfortunately, the only way to really do that, I've actually looked into it, believe it or not. And um, we thought about it, but it's just the amount of money it would cost to put some robotics on here to rotate it just doesn't justify the benefit. But gear pump discharges, you could theoretically set alarms, you know, and have it so that you can, you know what I mean? Like basically utilize alarms to tell you when to change your vessel and have the gear pump do the work. But yeah, unfortunately, that's the only part that I haven't really been able to figure out without adding a bunch of money to the system. Yeah, the, uh, let's see if I can get around to it. The, the discharge pump definitely, uh, it makes life a lot easier. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see it pouring out. And is that main body? Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful product, man. Fantastic looking product. Uh, Russ, so you, uh, so you have quite a, quite a bit of our short pass. Obviously you're, you're doing, uh, you know, but like you said, 150 to upwards of 200 uh, kilos a week. What uh, do you get, do you have any projections for the 2021 year? What are your ultimate goals coming in this next you know 12 months or so? Uh, 2021 is uh, for us is really you know moving and expanding our uh, minor cannabinoid production, uh, CBC, CBN, of course Delta A. Uh, we do uh, you know CBD isolate as well. I mean with everybody doing conversions these days, uh, you know, CBD isolate uh, is. People, it's in demand, you know, so uh, we, uh, we definitely make plenty of that for folks as well and, and then feed our own conversions. Um, but uh, I'm always like a kid in the candy store when you bring some product in for us to, to check out. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah, I, you know, I'm still, these days I'm still loving our CBN, honestly. 
uh, it's uh, it's so clean, um, and uh, it's you know making isolates is fun, uh, and CBN isolate, which is the only thing we produce for for uh, resale, uh, as far as an isolate, uh, and we don't in other words we don't sell CBN distillate. It's like an endless game, right? There's just, it's crazy how many there are and what you can do with them, and isolating them is a lot of fun. Um, something we're working on, which I think you'll like. Check this out. So this is a prep HPLC. So it's obviously the same type of thing as, um, you know, flash, except it's prep. So it's a smaller column. And the idea here is that we're actually separating out the fractions that come out of the flash unit. We're separating those out further to create pure, very minor cannabinoids. So like, for instance, CBC. CBL, CBT, like really, uh, you know, very small amounts, but um, very pure amounts. So it's something that we've been trying to play with to, um, you know, not only potentially create standards for the industry, but also for, um, you know, boutique further processing of flash. Obviously, as you know, it's not the most cost efficient way of separating things, but it is unfortunately the only way to really get good separation of some of the ones that are out there. Yeah, I actually think that's great because, you know, there's so many labs out there doing conversions right now that uh, a lot of the conversions just create so many unknowns um, that really the best practice would be to even take a conversion, then run it through uh, chromatography of some sort and uh, and clean it up even further. Um, you know, of course, some cannabinoids uh, are easier to do that than others, but having a system you know, to be able to even isolate from a conversion is fantastic. Yep, absolutely, man. That's what it's all about. Okay, so uh, thanks, Russ, for for having or for joining us. Uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure. We look forward to uh, getting some cool new gear your way for 2021. And um, and uh, if they, obviously if there's any, ever anything you need, you know, you you have my number, so feel free to give me a call or shoot me a text. So awesome, Jared. I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for your time. And oh, absolutely, man. Conversation. Thanks for uh, having me on. Thanks for your time, man. Really appreciate you as a customer and appreciate your feedback. And yeah, if you ever have any. Uh, additional feedback that you want me to uh, play with or integrate into one of our future systems, feel free to give me a call. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yep. You guys have a good one.